a terror attack. It is the largest foreign policy challenge for the Trump administration as it monitors tensions on the Korean Peninsula with U.S. and South Korea joint military drills beginning this week and the ongoing political turmoil in Venezuela. Let's bring in James Carafano. He is a senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation and a security and foreign policy analyst. Um, boy, a lot to work on here. Let's start with those terror attacks. Um, what do you make of them? What do you make of the fact that they are still searching for one of the major players? Well, you know, predictable. We have a great analyst at Heritage named Robin Sibcox. So every Terra, uh, Islamist terror attack in Europe since 2001, and there have been more in the last two years than there were between 2001 and 2014. So what accounts for this surge? Huge radicalized populations in Europe. You over flood to that, bringing in millions of people that you, you can't vet and account for. So the Europeans really have a big problem. And, you know, all this, all the courage and, you know, everything for people out in the streets saying, you know, we're going to go on and live our lives. but. What defeats this in the end is good CT programs, and, and Europe is lacking those. Yeah, I mean, especially when you see now that we're learning the number of people that were involved, the explosion that happened at Wednesday night that now people think, or police officials think, could have been some sort of bomb-making factory, and then moving to even a third location. Now you have one of the terrorists who they believe is the leader of the group, or at least the driver in the car, can't find him. I mean, what does this tell you about the level of sophistication and do you think that they were trained elsewhere or guided by forces elsewhere? Well, we'll know soon enough because typically in these cases, authorities come up with a lot of evidence uh, after the fact. But, but, but here's what we think is, is as ISIS lost its territory in the Middle East, the, the global Islamist insurgency really felt the impetus that they have to promote attacks to make them st still relevant. So. I mean, I think there is an argument to be made that this is part of a, that campaign to show that ISIS is, and groups like that are still in the fight. So I think we can expect more of this until these kind of networks are rolled up. Yeah. Um, let me turn your attention to the situation in North Korea, which, of course, was our front page story before all of these various things happened. It, you know, to some extent, some piece of it has at least the temperature has been turned down slightly in the sense that the Kim regime has said that, you know, for now they won't, they won't target Guam. Um, but beyond that, it's unclear what really happens from here. What do you think? Right. So these are two very different kinds of stories. In Europe, we have a problem that the Europeans can't handle and is really growing. They don't have a good solution for It's in part why the president put in the temporary ban, so we wouldn't be importing those kind of problems here. This is a different kind of story in North Korea. There are big steps in the escatory ladder. There's not a lot of room for anybody to really ramp this up. So I never thought that this crisis was going to spin out of control. What's, what's uh, noteworthy, though, is we have these U.S. rock exercises coming up, and the North Koreans might not just want to stand by and watch them, so they may do something else. My guess is they might do something at a lower level, artillery exchange, some other kind of thing. So don't expect it to go unmarked by the North Koreans, but again, don't expect it to lead to some kind of rapid escalation. But we heard a lot of people try and make the cases, and Rice among them, that this is the best we can hope for. Um, that this sort of going down the path where he's not being explicitly aggressive, but is still ramping up, testing, continuing to develop, continuing to hoard weapons, that this is the best case scenario. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, yeah, but you have to look at it from the U.S. Yes, perspective. Yes, you do. Well, well, what are our what are our real interests here? One is that there's no war in Northeast Asia because that's bad for everybody, and the other is that Kim doesn't have the capacity to attack the United States. We can achieve both those goals How? without either changing the regime or starting World War III. Okay, so between nuclear conventional deterrence and missile defense, we can check any nuclear threat against the United States. Uh, we can check any escalation from a lower level, and and the heavy containment will work because. The, the sanctions are going to really limit the capacity of them to really build out their inventory so they're a significant military threat. But, but they so were yes. already reporting that they already have the ability to reach parts of the U.S. I mean, if they have that yeah, miniaturized I, nuclear warhead, they have an ICBM, you don't think they're a threat already? No, because those missiles aren't going to get here because, one, we're going to shoot them down. Two, they have very limited capability. And three, we have a nuclear deterrent. Remember, the only purpose of this regime wanting nuclear weapons is to sustain the regime. And the one thing they know that will eliminate the regime in a New York minute is if they start a war. So 
we can defend our interests in this region. Hmm. And I think this administration is actually onto that policy. This is actually one of the crises okay. in the world that I think they've done well. And I actually think we've got a good handle on it. Yeah, mm. I, I, I disagree, but we're out of time. We'll have to pick it up another time. Thank you so okay. much, sir. Appreciate Thanks. your time. We are awaiting an update from the Boston Police Department after